Hello, and this is Matthew from Ruby Clarity. Uh, we'll be solving an HTB box today, then also, and um, we are going to be um, attacking, not attacking, like solving the challenge mail. So, um, first, this is your this is your home page. Then you click on starting points, in which we we did on, on our last video, and uh, we are able to connect our open VPN. So, what we are going to do first is uh, let's go to our terminal to connect our OpenVPN, which we downloaded in our last video. The sudo OpenVPN, then the name of your configuration file, then it's going to connect. And to make sure it's connected, you can see this green stuff because if it's not connected, you, it will be red. So, you can see this green, in which you know we can connect to a machine in a starting point. So. Let me bring this down. Then you can see here your own might be 000 minus 55 because I've solved some lab. Then I'm going to go down. I can see now. So this is our first machine. I'm going to click on it. Then um, so here yeah, I've already clicked on spawn machine already. That's why it gave me an IP address. The IP address of the server we are going to be solving challenge is 10.129. is the IP address. Then if you are not having IP address, just click on spawn machine and wait for a while. It's going to give you an IP address. So what are we solving next? So this is guided mode. So it's going to like step by step way in which we are going to be solving the chat challenge. Not just giving an IP address and telling us to to uh to give to give it an txt file in the server or stuff like that so it's just guided mode for beginners so what does the acronym for virtual machine stands for so um i think virtual machine stands for um i already said it already so vm stands for virtual machine so i've solved it already so that's why i'm not able to type here but you should type it here virtual machine and be able to to solve this virtual machine then the next thing what tool do we use to interact with the operating system in order to issue command via the command line just as want to start our VPN connection it's also known as a console or shell uh, what tool well, you have to read the question well and there is also an int here there's always an int here that would um that will just give us a clue of what's trying to um to hack so what do we use to interact? Say so what to interact with the operating system. So what do we use to interact with the operating system? Like this LS, all this um DIR, C D, other C. So what do we use to interact with the operating system? We use our terminal. So our terminal is what we use to interact with our operating system. So um such as want to start our VPN connection. So our terminal we use to start our VPN connection. Um and also, it's also known as a console or shell. Yeah. So make sure I search your terminal. So next, what service do we use to form a VPN connection into HTB Labs? What service do we use to form our connection, a VPN connection? So they said something about VPN here into the HTB Labs. So what is just like, what do we use to interact, like to have access to and, and be able to, um, to to uh ping the server you know without we um without that we connecting this open vpn and if you are not connected to it we will not be able to ping the server yeah but we are going to reach the book okay let's let me click let me open on that terminal so um i'm going to just ping I'm going to ping by ping the IP address. The IP address is this is the IP address and from here to paste it and control shift. And I think is this the IP address? Okay, okay. we are we're able to connect to the IP address. So we are we are we are able to ping ping the server, sending an ICMP packet to the server. 
So, what do we do next? Um, what service do we use to form a VPN connection into the HTTP lab? We use um, OpenVPN. So, our OpenVPN is the one we use to form a connection, a VPN connection to HTTP lab. We are able to use OpenVPN. The OpenVPN is open source. It's an open source VPN we can use and it's free to connect to HTTP lab. So, it's OpenVPN. So, next, what tool do we use to test our connection with our targets? With an ICMP echo request. Um, let me clear this again. So we want to send, we want to send an ICMP packet. How do you send an ICMP packet to a server? We use a command called ping. So ping will, will send an ICMP packet to the server and tell you that are you alive or not. Just sending an internet control message protocol, sending that are you there? Then if it's not there, it's not it's not even load anything. So we are going to ping. I will think the IP address of the server, which is 10.129. Then you see, see right there that we are able to ping it and it's going quite well. So let's go back. What to do is to test our connection. Um, ping, you can see ping used to test our connection targets and ICMP echo request. So, what is the name of the most common tool for finding open ports on the targets? What is the what is the most common tool for finding open ports on the target? So um, there is a tool called Nmap. So uh, Nmap, there are other tools also apart from Nmap, but the third most common, what we know is Nmap we use to scan. Uh, Nmap we always use to scan for port. There are many tools also you can use to scan for port. You can also create your own Python based to to scan for open ports in a server but the one that is widely used and known by by uh, ethical hackers and developers and so many network engineers use nmap so nmap is used to um to find open ports on a target not only open ports you are going to find um fashion of the port the operating system that is used and so many other things on the server so we are going to run nmap um, to find the open port on this, let me clear this. Then I sudo emma, then s. I think ss ss is used for just finding the open port because you don't want to find open, I'm not looking for a version. Then you paste the IP address, then So Nmap full full meaning of Nmap is network mapper. So and there is uh, one they call mass scan also. I think mass scan also work for finding open ports. But I think mass scan is I think kind of noisy, I don't know. But um should do Nmap SS. I think SS is used for just for finding open ports on the network. So we can see now that the only port open here is project which is telnet. Uh telnet. 23 TCP transfer control program and Telnet. So Telnet is the only open port on this server, which is it's only open, it's only open like it's it's the only one opened on the server. But it is not opened. You no, know, even we do an advanced scan, it's only port and uh, only port 23 and um, port 23 for Telnet that is open. So I'm going to go back. Um so you type what's the name of the most common tool for finding open ports? That is nmap. So nmap. Just type your nmap and you're good to go. So what service do we identify on port 23 TCP during our scan? So what service do we identify? Users. So we identify what telnet. So it's see it's under service. So it's telnet. Uh, we we'll go back and type our telnet. Um. So now this before we move to this one now let me explain Telnet. Telnet is just used to you know connect to, to allow us to have remote access to a to a system to a server. It's just like SSH, but Telnet send message in plain text. I think SSH shows SSH send message in uh in an encrypted format is more secure than Telnet. Yeah. SSH is more secure than Telnet. Telnet is also used to access a server remotely. SSH is also used to um 
access the server remotely, just like um, HTTP and HTTPS. HTTP hypertext transaction protocol is not encrypted. Then HTTPS is encrypted. So does this telnet sending command you accessing the server? You are sending the command in plain text to the server. So man is so vulnerable to man in the middle and them seeing what you are sending and stuff like that. So SSH is encrypted. So we are able to um um SSH you won't the attacker won't be able to like uh, see what you are sending to the server or stuff like that. So let's move on. So, um, what's that? What's username? Okay, what's how do you identify the ports is telnet. Then, what is that? It's able to log into target over telnet with a blank password. Um, I think default password for um, Linux because this is a Linux system, this is a Linux server. And they, will, they will tell us using new if we are solving a normal machine like this. If you click here, machines they will tell you using Linux server or a a Windows server. So, uh, what is username able to log into target over Telnet with a blank password? Now uh, we are going to connect Telnet first. So we we'll just go to our terminal again. So to connect to a server via Telnet, just Telnet, then the IP address then click enter so we'll be trying to connect to so connected to 10.1.9.3 because we are able to connect to tenants because the port is open but if the port is not opened we will not be able to connect to tenants to work so now you can see it's asking for login so the default what's the default password for um what's the default password for like Linux system and so many things and the username, yeah, the username for for uh to have admin access to uh, a Linux server. So I think his root, yeah, root mostly is root. If you buy a server, so I think you have to log into root like username root. Then you may have a default password to this, but it's not that common. This this is not. Is, I think if you are. If you are running this on a live target, <laughs> if only like they didn't configure the system very well, that's when you need to like log into tenant using the root username and stuff. So this is just like beginner level for you to like have a basic understanding of penetrating a system. So um what username was able to log in? So let me try my root. Oh, it's close connection because we're not able to put in and try to connect again. So wait for okay now. I'm going to try my roots, then I click enter. Oh now okay, we are able to log in. Just use an just use and those. I think there's no password. Just now login the root, and you can see that uh, we are now connected. So we are directly into roots, and you can see this arch. Anyway, you see this arch that means we are in root. You can see your roots at here. Yeah. So I'm going to just we are we are in the server already. Just type ls. To list all what is inside, then you can see flag.txt snap and the files that are there. So, uh, let's answer the question. So, what is username? So, root. So, you can see root is the user and root username. Then, submit root flag. So, our root flag is always in the flag.txt. So, uh, in all the machine you're going to hack, I think uh, all the you always ask for the for this the flag. Is out for the flag, you know, they call something capture the flag. So they put in the the flag.txt just an encrypted format of of words and letter. So we are going to cut a flag.txt. A command cut is used to read the file to read the content of a text file and txt. And you can see that I've gotten um, B4 O E B D D. You can see so is this your copy? Then you are going to paste it here. I think I was able to see. You are going to paste it here, then it will pop up something that yeah, you have solved this challenge. So B4 O B. So um we have been able to solve this. 
and if you're having any issue kindly comment i'm going to answer it so um we have been able to solve now very easily the difficulty is very easy there is very easy there's easy there's um, hard there's uh, i think very hard no i think insane yes insane yes insane i mean it's very hard so step by step you are going to be getting it so yeah thank you very much and also if you are running a server if you are running the server you bought a server kindly also change your any default default password or default anything configure your system well there are for it not to even a script kitty can be able to just get into your system if you are not if your stuff are not configured well so thank you very much like and subscribe thank you